I'm Vincent Rajkumar. I'm a professor of medicine at uh, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. This was a very large study looking at uh, disease associations that occur in patients with monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Now, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, or MGUS, occurs in over 3% of the general population over the age of 50. And uh, because it is so prevalent, a number of different diseases, over nearly 75 different diseases, have been associated or reported to be associated with the MGUS. The main problem with MGUS is that it's, it uh, puts the patient at risk for a cancer called multiple myeloma. Uh, what we did was, for the first time, we screened virtually the whole population in Olmsted County for the presence or absence of MGUS, and we captured most of these people. This has been already reported. In this study, we looked at all of the 16,000 different diseases that are in the disease codes uh, and the prevalence of these diseases in pa patients with MGUS and patients without MGUS. And by doing this, we are able to find which of the associations with MGUS are real and which are probably coincidental. And we were able to confirm that 14 out of the 75 reported associations are real and are significant in our study, and 61 we think are probably coincidental although we may be having some false uh, negative rates here, we are able to say that most of these associations are probably coincidental. In addition, we have found, uh, we have reported about 30 or 40 new associations that have not been previously reported in the literature that we think warrant further study. We get referrals from uh, neurologists saying my patient has motor neuron disease and happens to have a monoclonal gammopathy. Uh, is the monoclonal gammopathy causing the motor neuron disease? Are these related or not? Our study would say that the, the, the previous associations that were thought to be uh, between these two diseases are likely coincidental, that uh, MGUS is highly prevalent and this M motor neuron disease and MGUS association is just one of chance. And so now we can reassure the patient that the, they probably don't need treatment for the monoclonal gammopathy and that the motor neuron disease is a separate entity. The same way for the number of the other 60 different diagnoses, we can say that the relationship between MGUS and this disease was probably coincidental and so, so the treatment implications are there, the follow-up implications are there. What do, th what do our findings mean for patients? Mm -hmm. um, a number of patients have monoclonal gammopathies and they're going to be diagnosed with various diseases during the course of their life. Other than multiple myeloma or the 12 or 13 other diagnoses that we think are truly related to the MGUS, other diseases that they have, they probably don't need to worry about as, as, as ones that are due to the monoclonal gammopathy. And they may just get treatment appropriate for the disease rather than trying to target the monoclonal gammopathy. Uh, oftentimes this is important because the only way to treat the monoclonal gammopathy is to use chemotherapy like we would use for cancer. So uh, the fact that many of these associations may not be real is actually very helpful to patients in reassuring them that they can just be treated like anybody else who has the disease. So for example, a patient with motor neuron disease and monoclonal gammopathy, I would be able to tell your treatment for the motor neuron disease should ignore the diagnosis of monoclonal gammopathy and just treat the motor neuron disease. If you're going to have a renal disease that is previously thought to be related to MGUS, we can now tell the patient that you know, this is probably a coincidental association and that you sh your renal disease should be managed just like anybody else's renal disease would be managed if they did not have MGUS. Over the years, numerous diseases have been thought to be related to MGUS, and we have a table in the paper which lists some of these, rheumatoid arthritis, pulmonary tuberculosis, lupus, uh, various kinds of infections, uh, many other cancers. And, and when we look at the incidence of these in patients who have MGUS and patients who don't have MGUS, we actually find that there is no significant difference. And so all these presumed associations in the past were probably coincidental give, uh, purely because, you know, the high prevalence of MGUS in the general population. If you have a condition like MGUS that's present in 3-4% of the general population, then virtually any disease you would find 3-4% to 4 of patients would have an MGUS with that. To really make it a real association, you need to show that MGUS is far more common in patients with a particular diagnosis than in those without. Even though I think we had 
a sample size of over 17,000 and we looked at over 16,000 diagnosis codes. This is still, believe it or not, not a large enough study to definitively exclude an association. So we have published, along with this paper, an appendix of all of the 16,000 diagnosis codes and their probability of occurring in patients with MGUS and those without MGUS. And any author or researcher who is interested in a particular disease and whether that disease is related to MGUS or not can go and look at the, uh, the actual raw numbers and they can decide for themselves whether uh, our results are, uh, are underpowered and they can do a separate research study if they find our findings are provocative enough that they can follow up and do other studies to confirm or refute uh, what we are finding. Because monoclonal gemopathy of undetermined significance is so common, many, many internists will know about it and it's usually a condition picked out by internists. What they need to know now is that there are certain diseases that we have known for many, many years to have a real strong relationship with MGUS and those are true. Multiple myeloma, amyloidosis, Wallenstrom's microglobulinemia, lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. Besides those, our study finds certain other new associations which seem to be important to keep in mind. One is a risk of fractures, particularly of the vertebra and the clavicle, which seem to be more common in patients with MGUS even before they get myeloma. Uh, there seems to be a higher risk of blood clots in these patients and that needs to be kept in mind. Surprisingly, there seems to be a lower risk of high cholesterol and high lipid levels, which is more like a protective thing. And uh, these are some of the uh, disease associations that we think they need to pay more close attention to. The vast majority of the other disease associations they can probably say is likely coincidental and reassure their patients. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.